On Saturday night, the day before the Trans Day of Remembrance, a mass shooter uh, killed five and injured 25 at the Q Club in Colorado Springs. And almost immediately, some of the worst transphobes on social media were shocked that some people would look to them for some of the blame. So let's start out with Representative Lauren Boebert. Now, uh, Boebert helped fuel a climate of anti-LGBTQ hate by talking about drag queens, telling them to stay away from the children of Colorado's 3rd District, and who previously responded to a report listing her Twitter account as the third-ranked source of grooming slander on social media by promising to do more. And then, of course, here's uh, more of those statements, uh, tweets, uh, by Ms. Boebert. North Carolina preschool, you oh, the flag flashcards with the pregnant man to teach kids colors. We went from Randy Rainbow to Randy Rainbow. By the way, Randy Rainbow, kind of cringe. Not my cup of tea, but whatever. Uh, and then she says, take your children to church, not drag bars. Don't you believe in freedom? She also said, kid-friendly drag show in Texas is guarded by masked Antifa guards armed with AR-15s. Do you think that there is, there's maybe a reason for that, Lauren? Do you think there may be a reason why they were there? Could it be, you know, all the threats from the far right? And I love this. She says, remember, they only want your guns. They want to use theirs to protect our depravity. So, no, what is she saying? Uh, hold on. That the uh, Second Amendment only applies to them? It, I think that is what they're saying. <laughs> By the way, talking about churches, right? Uh, you realize that there's some pretty big scandals involving pedophilia in the churches, specifically the Catholic Church saying, by the way, Christianity is not the only religion that's been in trouble for that. Plenty of religions. That's why I'm not a favor of any religion. Or any kind of centralized uh, power where, you know, one person kind of dictates everything. You know, like dictators, for example. Or monarchists. Or, you know, priests. Pastors. People who are unaccountable. That kind of thing. Yeah. Turns out I like democracy. Who knew? Uh, now, that said, Bobert, here's what she uh, tweeted out on Sunday morning. The news out of Colorado Springs is absolutely awful. The, the, this morning, the victims and their families are in my prayers. This lawless violence needs to end and end quickly. Hmm. Ah, so good old thoughts and prayers. You know, because if you give thoughts and prayers, you don't actually have to do anything to solve the problems. Now, to be fair, the Q Club is not in her district, uh, but she could, of course, she, since she is a United States Congresswoman still, sadly, um, could actually, you know, uh, pass legislation or, you know, support legislation to do things like sample gun control. Oh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, but then again, uh, she chooses not to. <laughs> uh, now, the other thing she, she could have done to prevent this is maybe to change her views on the LGBTQI plus community and maybe not spread the smear about all members of that community being groomers. That would be great. Now, that said, the first two victims named the Q, uh, Club Q shooting were bartenders Derek Rump and Daniel Aston. We're glad Aston identified as transgender. And I'm going to guess, of course, that the only prayers that Lauren Boebert had for Daniel Aston was that uh, he wasn't trans. Because understand, this is who they are. People like Lauren Boebert think that being gay and trans are choice. And that, well, if you didn't choose to be that way, then I, we wouldn't have to do violence against you. Oh, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be mocked. You wouldn't have violence done against you because, you know, you wouldn't do, uh, you know, uh, uh, suicide. You know, you wouldn't do that. So why, do, why don't you people just stop being trans and gay? Why? That's Lauren Boebert's thought process. 
that they should choose Jesus. But there's more. Ben Shapiro. Let me see if I have that uh, here. That tweet. Um, not quite. But let me go to read it, because there's another Ben Shapiro one. He says, The quest by the Democratic leadership and media to link a horrifically evil shooting at a Colorado gay club to anyone who doesn't support a progressive social agenda is ongoing and terrible for the country. It's a cynical game. Only one side plays, and it's trash. Let me just say Ben Shapiro, trash. Ben, do you forget how uh, you and other right-wingers talk about how the, the entirety of Black Lives Matter protests were nothing more than dangerous and deadly riots responsible for burning down entire cities, even though it was 93% peaceful. You remember that, Ben? Do you remember? Do you remember? But it's only, it's a cynical game that only one side plays. Yeah. Yeah, you just described yourself. You just described your own side. Every accusation is a confession. That said, uh, Ben Shapiro has prior statements that he has broadcast to his massive YouTube audience. Here's one of those. Now, if you're wondering what the hell a family-friendly drag show is, the answer is it doesn't exist. It is a contradiction in terms. You might wonder why it's appropriate for small children to be visiting any bar, let alone a drag bar, which is inherently sexual. It's inherently sexual. Why are children there? Yeah, I remember going to the bar when I was a kid. Yeah. If you're there during the daytime, uh, I, I didn't see what the issue was. It's not like they were serving a 12-year-old beer. No, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, again, but it, you don't understand. Uh, it, it's inherently sexual. No, there are non-sexual drag shows, and then there are sexual-themed drag shows where there are no children involved. They are separate things. But they, they cannot seem to separate that. They cannot seem to understand that, yes, uh, there, there is drag that is not sexual, and then there is drag that is. They don't, they don't get it. And by the way, um, I, I find it interesting, it, or not just interesting, but actually really hilarious, how uh, Ben Shapiro, how a guy, you know, is, is talking about uh, things being inherently sexual who doesn't understand that female wetness, who seems to believe that female wetness is a sign of a health problem. Wet ass P word. He doesn't get it. Not exactly an authority on anything sexual. But uh, I showed you the other uh, image here from Ben Shapiro. Here's what he recently wrote. My uh, latest for the Real Daily Wire dives into the insidious philosophy of transgressivism. Oh, transgressivism. What is going on here? <clears throat> how it targets children and how and why we must fight it, not only politically, but personally. Personally fighting transgressivism. Hmm. But it gets even worse. It, it, gets, it gets more extreme. Because Ben Shapiro, he, he's just like the tip of the iceberg in horribleness. Here's Tucker Carlson. So let's say you were interested in sexualizing children, and unfortunately some people are. What would you do? You might have a drag queen story hour at a library or a school. That's where you would indoctrinate and sexualize children. It's happening across the country. The academic queer theorists and the people who founded the Drag Queen Story Hour movement have left a trail of evidence in academic papers and manifestos that say the goal is very clear. They want to sexualize children, creating a sexual connection between adult and child, which has, of course, long been the, the, the kind of final taboo uh, of the sexual revolution. I knew going into this 
battle, you know, fighting pedophilia and the grooming of children, uh, that it would be an uphill battle and that big tech would try and censor us. You know, to, to have people attack us for just simply wanting to stop the sexualization and mutilation of children, it does a lot more to uh, expose who they are than us. So, it really does. you know, we roll with it, but. Mm. Oh, yeah, uh, totally does. Mm. Yep, yep, says a lot about them. No, no, it doesn't. So Tucker Carlson not only goes on and, and you know, says ridiculous and horrible things, uh, you know, accusing uh, drag queens and everybody of being pedophiles, but also platforms some of the worst people, like Christopher Rufo. Well, you just heard him. It's like, oh, yes, there's a manifesto with their whole goal, sexualized children. Says who, dude? Says who? And then uh, we have Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh also, weirdly enough, seems to deny that any of his rhetoric has anything to do with the violence against trans people and drag queens. Leftists are using a mass shooting to try to blackmail us into accepting the castration. He can't even, in his denial, he can't even stop himself. He just can't. Like, oh, you know, uh, like, we had nothing to do with this. Uh, even though we're saying that they're kind of castrating and sexualizing children. No! People are just beyond evil. I have never felt more motivated to oppose everything they stand for with every fiber of my being despicable scumbag. Somehow, like, he's the victim. I can't believe you would victimize me by like this. You know, for me, putting out the message that has caused so much violence against these communities. And then he says, people die and the first thing they think is, yes, we can use this as ammo against conservatives who don't think children should be exposed to drag shows. Soulless demons, evil to the core, truly. Oh, I think we have found evil all right it's matt walsh again he, he basically he, he's dancing on the grave of these people of the five people who were murdered because somebody decided they didn't like a drag show but it gets again worse because this is uh what matt walsh had said before this had all happened. I was not previously familiar with the term drag mom, though from context, it seems that this is just another way of describing a professional groomer. The uh, quote drag child is handed over to the drag mom to be groomed and conditioned. It seems to be essentially a sort of pedophilic predatory farm system that the groomers have set up. Progressivism does what the name suggests, what the label suggests. It's progressivism, so it progresses, except that it progresses in the same sense that, say, cancer progresses. It keeps spreading and getting worse and eating away at our civilization until it is stopped or until it destroys its host. And just like cancer, stopping it is not a gentle or a painless process. The farther along the cancer is, the more aggressive you have to be in fighting it. Culturally, we are approaching, if we haven't already reached, a terminal state, which means we have to be all the more aggressive, which calls for two things. First, obviously, involving children in drag events in any capacity should be outright criminalized everywhere. There, there is no other way. You know, this, this doesn't stop until police are breaking down the doors at these places and carting the adults away in handcuffs. Charge them all as pedophiles. Throw them in prison, and, and whenever they get out, if they do get out, put them on the sex offender registry for life. This is the guy who on the radio had talked about how 16-year-old girls, very fertile. Talking about the fertility of teen girls. And yet, he's saying, oh, no, it's, it's them who are the pedos. Uh, they are the groomers. It is they who are grooming. No, I think you're protesting a little bit too much. I think you're a little too obsessed with drag queens. I think you're a little too obsessed with all of this stuff. And it's because 
I think he's covering for himself. Nobody thinks about pedophilia. Nobody thinks about, you know, little kids more than Matt Walsh. What a creep. And so there it is. It's weird how the people who seem to be, you know, screaming so loudly about the drag queens grooming children and being pedophiles, again, you heard it in their own words, right? Are suddenly so very surprised that, you know, when, whenever somebody decides to grab their gun, put a stop to them. I showed you the video uh, as well of, a, you know, a, a person who was throwing an explosive into a donut shop that had, you know, hosted a drag event. These are not isolated incidences. And yet they're all incredulous. Oh my God, I can't believe somebody would blame me for the things that we've been calling for. And then somebody went and actually did it. And then we get to Chaya Raichik, mm, libs of TikTok. Here's what she uh, said about this. I've publicly disavowed violence numerous times. Have you disavowed the violence directed at me? As a result of inciting your followers against me? Let's see you disavow violence and then SDF you lying hypocrite. Huh. Well, somehow, don't you know I'm the real victim here? Me? I'm the victim. I can't believe you would do this to me. Wait. Who have been the, who is the people the, the person that was again just hours after this happened? Posting about another Colorado, you know, organization or Colorado group that is uh doing drag shows. I mean, seriously. Seriously. Oh, but no, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. No, the fact is, I, I think the kids are far safer around drag queens than any of these fucking hateful ghouls. Because that's what they are. And the other thing that seems to be missed around here, that nobody, n nobody um, talks about on the right wing, it, it's not like kids, first of all, okay, uh, if a kid sees a drag queen, you think that's automatically going to make them want to be a drag queen? No. <laughs> of course not. And again, there's nothing wrong if they want to when they grow up. Fine. Fine. But the other thing is, these events, people are, you know, parents are taking their kids to those events. Nobody's forcing them to be there. They can leave. It's not like they're being held captive like the people at, for example, Donald Trump's announcement for, uh, you know, when he, when he announced he was running for president. You can actually leave. Security's not going to stop you. You're not forced to watch the, you know, the drag queens. But look, at the end of the day, it's very, very obvious that this is all about targeting a subgroup of people. People that have done nothing wrong, but they're targeting them nonetheless for hatred and harassment for whatever reason. And there's multiple reasons that you can, you know, that you can point out, you know, whether it be clout, licks, you know, uh, revenue from videos, from outraging people to, you know, political stuff, whatever the reason, it doesn't matter. Regardless of the reason, this is disgusting what they're doing and how they're targeting people.